Welcome back to the show, folks. This is The Wrap Up, your daily dose of pop culture and movie news wrapped up all into one show, hosted by me, Mr. H Reviews. If you are new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification, and you can stay up to date on this, The Wrap Up, the daily show. Today, we've got some fantastic news for all of you Godzilla fans. We've had the box office numbers come in domestically and also foreign for the Thursday night previews, just the Thursday night previews, and they're looking strong. So we're going to be covering that. We're also going to be touching on who's been cast as the Batman. That's uh, some breaking news. It happened last night, but obviously we'll wrap it up today. We've also got some discussion from Mary Elizabeth Winstead on Birds of Prey. Some interesting comments were made about the tone of the film. You know, we'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, and then we'll wrap it up with some Captain Marvel uh, deleted scenes, deleted concepts, and then some viewer questions. So if you want to skip ahead to any of these, the timestamps will be linked down below in the description box, and then also in a pinned comment down below. So please do skip ahead if you don't want to watch any of my waffle. As always, if you do want to submit your viewer questions into the show, please do. You can submit them via Gmail, mistagereviews at gmail.com. You must use the subject line, the wrap up, otherwise I cannot get to them. That is really, really important because I can sort through all of my Gmail. So anyway, let's talk Godzilla. Godzilla opened on Thursday night with previews, okay? As with most movies, they have previews. It's They tend to be limited in terms of the screenings which they offer on previews. So it can impact the total amount of money which the film will make just in previews. But this is looking strong. Godzilla opens with $6.3 million dollars just in america okay just domestically that's really important because i've got the figures for the worldwide the foreign uh which we'll touch on in a moment and they are strong this is a good opening just on previews so this is on the hollywood reporter so yeah good website not at all you know, something we take with a pinch of salt. They're very good. Uh, and they state that Godzilla King of the Monsters stomped its way to a huge 6.3 million in Thursday night previews at only 3,600 theatres. It's a fairly wide release, but it's not the biggest. Okay, it's not, the, it's not huge. So that's really, really good. And by comparison, it's outperformed Kong Skull Island, which only took 3.7 million and then obviously hit uh, 61 million in its... Well, believe this is stating its opening weekend. Um, now, this does fall behind 2014's Godzilla, which hit 9.3 million in, in the previews and then went on to hit a 93 million debut. Few things to consider with this. Okay, uh, 2014's Godzilla had a different level of marketing. There's been different movies in between. So when I compare Godzilla King of the Monsters with Godzilla 2014, I, I'm not overly worried about that. That doesn't bother me. The fact that it's smashed well above Kong Skull Island is indicative of the name power of Godzilla. Godzilla is such a huge property and a big, big property and well loved. This is indicative of that. Uh, and then also the marketing. I feel like the marketing has been better for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Kong Skull Island, I don't remember nearly as much marketing or, or, as, ne or as much hype for the marketing, if, if that uh, makes any sense. I think this will easily hit 100 million opening weekend. And the reason why I say that, okay, the reason why I say that is when we then move on and we take a look at the worldwide total, so the foreign total, we're hitting good numbers. $12.7 million dollars on the foreign total for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, this is from Box Office Mojo. Um, so, good, good source. Not bad at all. Uh, they, don't, they haven't got the full listings, but 12.7 million is a big opening. That's a big opening for Thursday. There's some other factors to take into account here as well. In the UK, children are off on vacation at the moment. They're not in school. They've got a week off. So, they are going to be taken to the theatres Friday, Saturday, uh, maybe even Sunday daytime before they go back to school. This movie, they're going to be taken to watch. There's a few other issues with this movie at the moment. So we've got uh, the critic score coming in, not the best. We've got the audience score coming in, absolutely smashed it. It's really, really smashed it. So the critic score, we can kind of just pass on to one side. It doesn't matter. 
The fact that this has had such a strong opening weekend, uh, 3.6 thousand theatres just in America alone, 12.7 million foreign total, plus the kids being off on vacation in the UK, plus great word of mouth, because we know that because the audience score is so high, this is going to hit good numbers. And we'll cover that on the show once the numbers fully come in. It'll probably be on Tuesday, I would imagine. And it'll be really interesting to see whether I was right. I think, this is my hot prediction, that it will hit 100 million opening weekend in the States. And I think I think we're looking at a really strong opening weekend worldwide. I'm really looking forward to seeing this, um, just what it does and what it tracks. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Have you seen Godzilla, King of the Monsters? Let me know down below in the comments. What do you think it's going to hit? Leave your prediction down below and then come back uh, to the next wrap-up show. Tune in daily. We'll have that on another episode. So leave your thoughts down below. Now we're going to move on to Deadline. They have come out and stated here, who is this? Who's going to be the next Batman? Robert Pattinson. Now, this was long rumoured. It's about time we have confirmation of who the goddamn Batman's going to be. Uh, it's Robert Pattinson. A lot of people don't like this idea, I know. I don't mind this. It's fine. I have yet to see it. I'm just going to wait and see. That's kind of my thoughts. But they've got the exclusive on this. So, Warner Bros. has approved Robert Pattinson as the star of the Batman for, for a trilogy of movies. This is new. I don't remember the reports ever saying that there was going to be a trilogy of films. But it says the trilogy of films that Matt Reeves will direct. What? So that's new. Okay, Robert Pattinson is in for the long haul now. A trilogy of movies. Now, Pattinson has been considered a front runner because the filmmaker liked him. So this is Matt Reeves. Uh, but the studio was torn between him and Nicholas Holt, which Nicholas Holt is actually a really, really good actor. He is quite diverse looking at him, it might not might not be the first pick for it, but he's a good actor, so I can kind of see why they were torn. Now, Warner Bros. wanted both of the actors on tape because this is such a big decision, so they actually wanted a screen test, I would imagine. Um, and it's a cornerstone for Warner Bros. and the DC franchise, Batman is. So it sounds like they're really setting whoever is going to be taking on this role for a lot of movies to come. Three confirmed, but maybe this is seeing the integration into the DC universe we don't know so those meetings happened yesterday and deadline is told uh, the decision was wait was made yesterday so holt who starred in tolkien is about to reprise his role in x-men uh, he was impressive but pattinson will be the guy uh, and negotiation negotiations are underway at the moment so he's confirmed but they're just obviously negotiating uh, really really good to hear really really good to hear now, apparently, Pattinson uh, was the strong choice. He certainly has been at the centre, um, you know, for Twilight Saga and all this kind of nonsense. I am, yeah, I'm kind of happy with this. Um, I don't mind Robert Pattinson. I don't think he's a, he's not a bad actor. He's not a bad actor at all. Um, I think, yeah, I think good. I think really, 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 really good. So what do you guys think about this, Robert Pattinson as the Batman? Let me know down below in the comments section on any of these topics. Please do let me know. Uh, now let's move on to Mary Elizabeth Winstead and her comments on Birds of Prey. So this is over on Cinema Blend. So her comments were interesting. So she says she's commenting on Gemini Man, uh, her, com her, her role there. But then she also says... In Birds of Prey, I play this assassin who's been trained since childhood. It's all women and genuinely funny and weird. It feels from the 90s in the best way. It could be really, really bad. A movie feeling like it's from the 90s. Um, especially comic book movies from the 90s. I don't know whether I like the sound of that or not. Uh, that could be good, could be really, really bad. Really, really bad. Um, so I thought I'd bring you this because from the 90s, what movies have you seen now, today, that you could have, that you could have watched, that you can watch basically, that you like, that you enjoy, um, with a comments like this that doesn't fill you with a little bit of trepidation? Let me know because I genuinely like to hear. Fill me with some confidence in this property. Now, moving on, Captain Marvel. 
Okay. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was supposed to feature a comic accurate supreme intelligence. Okay, so this is courtesy of comicbook.com, but they state uh, it came and went. So Andy Nicholson is the production designer, so obviously he knows these things. And he states that the real supreme intelligence, uh, as an idea, it was never out and out rejected. And at one stage, it was actually part of the movie. Now, he's not the person to say whether or not that it will eventually come back, but it was part of it. So it states that uh, in terms of the, you know, the kind of binary device, the power inhibiting, it states that it was there. We did develop a line where within that space from the big pool of water in the back of the room that eventually that's where the big green head would have come out of. Um, I think eventually for the final scene of the movie, it would have taken away from what was the core focus, which was uh, it would have been a big spectacle, which would have overwhelmed the main thrust of what we were doing, which was talking about Carol's development and transformation of Captain Marvel. I would have loved to have seen a big giant green head. I thought it would have been awesome. I really, really do. I don't begrudge that idea at all. I think they should have done it. In my eyes, they definitely should have done that because it probably would have made the film infinitely better than what we got. Uh, what do you guys think? Comic accurate supreme intelligence? Would it have bettered the film? Would it, would it have detracted from the film? Let me know down below in the comment section. Now, guys, we've got some time for some viewer questions today. I've got two for you. So as always, as of all of these things, if you want your viewer questions answered, please do send them over to me, mrhreviews at gmail.com using the subject line, The Wrap Up. And obviously I'll have time to get to them on this daily show. So we've got two really, really good questions. Kane submitted this question to me and he asked, I just want to know your thoughts on the upcoming live action Akira movie. I am tentatively hopeful. Taika Waititi, a lot of people poo-poo the man because of course he's a comedian right he's a, he's a comedic director a lot of people seldom remember that comedic directors have a great amount of timing they understand timing they can be serious okay i i hold out some hope for him in terms of that he's also made really really good comments about adapting and being respectful to the source material but where i start to get some trepidation is when i learn that it's being set in uh, Manhattan, not Tokyo. When I, when I hear the names of, um, you know, who's going to be, you know, the, the, the rumoured names of the characters and how they're setting them up, they're going to be brothers, not friends. There's a whole bunch of stuff which, as we started to hear about this project developing, that it started to make me feel a little bit concerned for it. Um, but I, I am hopeful because Taika Waititi, he's not a bad director. He could do some really, really good things with timing. So, you know, I, I'm i hopeful, but tentatively hopeful. So hopefully that answers your question. What are your thoughts on this, guys? And also, Kane, let me know down below. The live-action Akira movie, you hopeful for this? Let me know down below. So we also had another question from Von Diesel, 3000. He submitted this via the Gmail reviews at gmail.com with the uh, subject line of the wrap-up. Now he says, uh, Mr. H, Mr. D here. What makes you think that they won't license Destoroyer from Toho? Now he's referencing uh, a video I did recently, the ending of Godzilla King of the Monsters Explained. I'm not going to get into it too much because I don't want to touch on any spoilers. But he basically asked me, I'm interested why you so sure-footedly said... Of course, not Destoroyer, but a Destoroyer-like monster. What do you know, Mr. H? What are you keeping from us? <laughs> I'm not keeping anything from you at all. Um, I'm just looking at it from a business perspective. They've, they've, they've spent a lot of money on this property. And to buy Destoroyer but not have his true origin, because obviously they, they, have to, they have to buy the license from Toho, right? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to do that. It's a lot of cash. And they've already introduced something which, if they're going to create Destoroyer from what they've introduced, isn't Destoroyer's origin. So it's not going to be Destoroyer. So it, would make, it wouldn't make sense from a business perspective to buy Destoroyer to have a completely different origin. Um, especially when what they set up in the movie 
could easily create Destoroyer as his original origin anyway. So that's kind of why. Um, I know... I know there's a possibility they could do it. I'm well aware. But I just think from a business perspective, it wouldn't make any sense because what they've set up creates a brand new creature where they would have saved money, a new origin, but something which is familiar to Destoroyer, basically. Now, I don't know. I don't know, and I'm not keeping anything from you. Uh, it's very rare that I actually keep anything from people unless I've been asked very specifically don't tell people this, please. This is in confidence. Um, or I've signed an NDA, for instance. But for things like this, this is just verbal musings. And ultimately, I don't know. I'm just genuinely... I'm just thinking. It's, it's just, uh, you know, me logically working through it all. But uh, hey, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think I'm right here or do you think I'm wrong? Let me know down below in the comment section. So that wraps it up here for the wrap-up. Guys, if you did enjoy this show, please do hit that like button. And if you are new here, please do hit subscribe. This is your daily dose of pop culture and movie news all in one place, wrapped up where we can have a good discussion on it all. If you like what I'm doing here on the show and you want to support the channel further, you can head on over to my Patreon page. The link is down below in the description box. It really does help me out and it helps me put this show on for you. I'm looking to get some new graphics, maybe even a new set, so it's not just me sat here. Um, and that's kind of what Patreon all goes towards working for. So anyway, if you like this video, please do give it a like and a share. As always, I have a Mr. H. Take care.